This video will go through tuning A4 using double string unison and an ETD on the app because it's very important that you train your ear to be able to tune A4 to zero cents using the DSU and the ETD before you try to do it on the piano because once you try to do it on the piano now we've got all the other problems that have to do with stability and getting a clean unison on a real piano but if you understand what a double string unison sounds like when it's out of tune by two cents four cents and you've trained your ear to be able to do that well then you can really speed up your tuning of a4 and the principle we're using here is this idea of using the oral feedback loop where you make a judgment by ear get some feedback and then if you're wrong confirm by ear so in this case, what we're doing is we're trying to train our ear how to hear what a double string unison sounds like when it's out of tune by two cents, when it's out of tune by five cents, when it's out of tune by half a cent. Because if we know how much we need to move the note, and we will using the go eight method, then if we're able to move the note that much in one or two steps, then our tunings get a lot faster. So this is the skill that this particular lesson exercise tries to develop, tries to build, and tries to get you better at. The lesson is here in the ear training class. If you click here, when you get to the ear training class, go down to tuning A4 at zero cents using double string unison and an ETD. You start with a double string unison that's out of tune. The goal here, the trick, the strategy, the skill that's needed here is to be able to hear this double string unison as a clean, unfettered, not moving sound. So any kind of why you are you anything that's changing is not good enough. What you need to be hearing here is a clean, solid, not moving sound, a vowel that doesn't change. Ah, uh, that's a vowel that doesn't change. E, that's a vowel that doesn't change. Sometimes people hear E and they think it's, it's not clean. Don't confuse tone with movement. So when you're listening to the double string unison, you're trying to get no movement. This is moving. So how do we get this to be clean? Well, we need to move one of the strings. Do we move it up or down? It doesn't matter. Pick one, choose, guess, it doesn't matter. If you guess right and you start moving it, the movement of the double string unison will slow down. If you're going in the wrong direction, it's going to speed up. This definitely got better. If I had chosen to go in the other direction, the movement is speeding up. That is very fast, lots of movement there. So your goal here is just to get it clean. We're not tuning the DSU yet to A4, zero cents. We're just getting it clean. That's part of the double string unison procedure. There are seven steps to use the double string unison. First step is to mute one string. That leaves two strings. Unless, of course, you're tuning a bichord. It's already two strings. You don't need step one. <laughs> and in this app, you don't need step one because I'm giving you the double string already. So there you go. Step one, mute one string, that leaves you two string. Step two is to tune that double string so it sounds like one string. And that's what we're doing right now. See, this kind of has that sound of a plane flying overhead. It's not clean. That is a clean sound. You're, now, if it's not clean, you're going to get feedback that says this is not clean. But in this case, the double string unison is clean. And then we get the information that the EETD would give us if we were to measure this double string unison. In this case, it says 4.6 cents. That means sharp because it's a plus. If it was a flat, it would say minus 4.6 cents. So this double string unison is sharp by 4.6 cents. And that's step three. Step three is to judge the double string unison. And depending on what note you're tuning, where in the procedure, where in the, on the piano, uh, your judgment procedure will be different. In this case, when we're tuning A4, the judgment is to use an ETD, which we've done here by pressing that button, measure DCSU. So there it is, 4.6 cents sharp. But step four is move one string so that the DSU is out of tune by the amount that you figure or know or got feedback by the amount that you want to move it. In this case, we want to move it 4.6 cents. And this is where the feedback comes. We're going to move it to what we think is 4.6 cents. And by just by doing it over and over, you get a pretty good idea. So this is what I think 4.6 cents sounds like.
No, that's too much. Too much. Let's try that. So now that I moved one string 4.6 tenths, or what I think is 4.6, the step five says move the other string and make a clean double string unison again. All right, so I think that's clean. So back to step three. So three, four, and five are looped until that step three says that the note is correct. So this, 3.2 cents, is a very important number for me to know right now, very important, because what we have here going on is I made a judgment by ear, I thought it was 4.6, then I got some feedback here. Now I was making a judgment and I was using a technique of double string unison. So the feedback I'm getting is on my ability to tell what 4.6 cents sounds like. So this will have to go into my little memory bank to say that, you know what, 4.6 cents is a lot. It's a lot more than you think it is, Mark. So because I only moved it to now 3.2, I think it was. So it went 1.4 cents. I lowered it by 1.4. So now I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna try and make it twice as out of tune. You know, you see how I'm doing that? If it's twice as out of tune, my 1.4 will be more like 2.8. So that's step three, back to step four. That's definitely more than I did it before. Step five. That sounds clean. Okay, that was total luck. Total luck. But you see how this is, actually I'm glad that happened because this really, really brings home one of the really amazingly powerful, incredibly amazing things about the way the Go8 method works. Basically, it gives you a chance to do this. Like if I was off by a little bit, I would then have to move again. But in some of the times when I'm using the method, each step of the method, it sets you up for this situation where you just boom, right on, get it. I liken it to throwing a dart at a dartboard. So some techniques are more like the one dart at a time technique. And if we were to sit there and throw one dart at a time at a bullseye, how many of us think we could get a bullseye, right? Especially if we we're not good at darts. But you could take someone who, who doesn't play darts at all and give them a handful of darts they throw them all at the bullseye, maybe one of them gets in. And that saves you some time when that happens. So what does this mean? This means that when I tuned the second time the double string unison, coming from the experience of moving the double string unison from 4.6, thinking I had moved it about 4.6, what I actually ended up doing was only 1.4. So I registered that in my brain and then doubled it. You know, I said, I'm just gonna move it more. In the process of doing the tuning, you get immediate feedback on whether or not your guesses are good enough. And then you can alter and learn at the time, right when you're doing it, you can learn. And then of course, there's the long-term learning that happens, which obviously, I, you know, you could say I haven't learned because I should have been able to do 4.6 better than that. The app is programmed to make a comment based on how many tries it takes. If you get more than three tries, it, it says, you know, you should try to get three tries. And the reason why it does that is because ideally you should be able to get very close on the first try within half a cent and within a cent. It's a lot easier to move the double string unison like a tiny, tiny amount. When we got this big amount, like 4.6, it's like, do I move it 4.0 or five? You know, how much did I do it? But the difference between 0.5 cents and one cent is very obvious. 
the difference between 4 and 4.5 is not so obvious. And I liken it to golf. It's like the drive off the tee, right? If you're, let's say you're doing a par 3. That big drive should get you on the putting green. Then you can putt close to the hole, and then that third stroke should get you in the hole. That's why I say, so it's like a, a par 3 course. That's why I say you should, it should take you three turns. So let's try it again. Here's a quick explanation of the double string unison procedure. First, you mute one string. You don't need to do this if you're tuning by chords. Then you clean up the double string unison. Then you judge or measure the double string unison. Is it good, you ask yourself? If it's not good, you're going to have to move one string in the direction you need to go. Then you move the other string, making a clean double string unison again. Then you will judge the double string unison again. Is it good? If it's not, you've got to repeat that step of moving one string, then the other. And then judge it again. And then when you find out that it is good, you remove the mute, tune the tricord clean, and you're done. This is another way of looking at it. Mute, clean up, judge, measure. Then you do the cycle. Move one, move the other, judge. 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 And you just keep doing that until the DSU is good. And when it is, you remove the mute and clean up the tricord. It loads automatically, and I think it just did. Give me another shot at this. Getting worse. I'm not sure about that. Wow, that's the end of it. That's got to be it then. Yep, minus 3.2 cents. So let's see if I can repeat my 3.2 cents that I did before, or was it 3.6? Mm, I think that's too much, but I'm going to go with it. I think that's clean. Okay, 0.8 cents. So that was pretty good. And it was too much, right? It was more than 3.2. It was actually 4 cents. But now I'm going to bring it down by 0.8, which is a lot easier to do. So this would be my second putt trying to get close to the hole. That's very, very slight. A little more. Maybe that's it. Okay, that's clean, I think. 0.4 cents. So I only moved it 0.4. So now what I do? Just repeat that. Just repeat that motion. I think that's it. There. So that's how I... It was four tries? Hmm, I thought it was three. It started at 3.2. Oh, maybe that measurement counted as 1, 2 to 0. 0.8. Yeah, I guess it was, yeah, i got to fix that. That's not right. That's not right. That was, that was, first try got me to 0. 0.8, second try 0. 0.4, and third try 0. Yeah, this was three tries. I'll fix that. Anyways, that's a really long explanation of how this works, but I hope that you learned a lot from it. I hope you learned about the, uh, the oral feedback loop. I hope that you saw me learning. You know, how I got a lot better even just doing this. You know, even though I have all this experience, I can still learn because the method is so powerful in helping people learn. And I hope that you were able to figure out the importance of training the ear and how by using the double string unison, you can really cut down on your time it takes to tune a piano. And I hope you also understood that the double string unison and the Go8 method sets up the opportunity for you to get a hole-in-one and add a few hole-in-ones to your tuning and that really speeds up your tuning.